All right, welcome back everyone, and today we'll be covering the final stage for Shovel Knight, the mysterious final Tower of Fate, which starts with a descent into a familiar room if you remember the Tower of Hera. And honestly, the majority of the preliminary portion of the stage you can do however you like. I will show off some optimal stuff with the final room, uh, but this room you can do whatever you want. This is just the setup that I usually do to get through it. No matter which way you choose to do the majority of the room, just make sure that you're either knuckling or damage boosting through these last bricks, and then use a dagger. A single one will suffice. You'll fall down through plenty of rooms, so you'll make it all the way to the right and land on this little platform. Now, this will be the slightly more tricky way of getting through this room, but it is um, the most efficient use of your mana. And I will show off the less uh, heart attack ways if you're not feeling confident. Swag in whichever way you find most comfortable. Don't forget these last four daggers, and make sure that you have at least enough mana for the coin trick if you're doing that route. So, for example, if you're going for an orb kill, you'll need much more mana to be able to execute it. However, the netherless kill is fairly quick as well. Uh, but if you are bold enough to go for the coin route, then you'll need at least 10 mana in order to catch Shield Knight after defeating the first phase of the Enchantress. Now, I'll be dropping links in the description once again to some videos that Applesauce has clipped, uh, and I'll also be using some visual references that made it much, much easier. This is actually a lot easier than you might think, once you know what you're looking for. However, uh, and I probably can't stress this enough, um, the amount of time it took me to be able to do the coin kill on Enchantress 2, just to do it once, uh, it took me about 45 minutes um, of trying. So yeah, this is not an easy kill, but man is it satisfying. Now before we go and celebrate, hooray we beat the game, uh, we're going to go look at the rooms that I mentioned we should be practicing. I found one of the most helpful things to do once I entered this room was to count my daggers. So shortly after entering this room, you'll do four daggers. Um, the fourth dagger will leave you essentially precariously over a single tile wide brick. Make sure that you land on the platform, jump, and then do five more daggers. Uh, and after the fifth dagger, you can drop a mobile gear and catch a free ride to the end. If you want to feel like you couldn't possibly screw it up, then try this instead. Dagger to this first raised platform, then casually jump across the first two gaps. And from here you'll be able to jump up nice and high, do five daggers, and you'll make it across every other bit of danger in the room. Now for those who are using the Chaos Orbs in their route, there's actually a good reason to learn this kill, because there's a little bit of randomness we can avoid at the end of the fight. So you always start by dropping this gear and then reflecting the first two fireballs at the Enchantress. Hold the Charge Slash and wait for her to come by. Get her once, swing, start another Charge Slash, turn around and hit her again on the way to the left. Drop two Chaos Orbs once she starts firing. Reflect her fireballs so that all the damage hits her before she gets to the top of the screen. Hit her with a Charge Slash, swing, Charge Slash, and you'll kill her. Once more, at full speed, have your gear ready. Drop gear, reflect, reflect. Charge slash swing, charge slash, orb, orb, reflect, 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 charge slash swing, charge slash. So what's the difference for neither list? Well, <laughs> the difference is that you don't have the orbs, so. Walk to the middle of these three window panes, turn around, throw gear, again, reflect, reflect, charge slash, it's literally the same thing you just saw. However, the adjustments that we have to make come right about now. Although we would normally be able to kill the Enchantress with a couple more Charge Slashes, you'll see that she's just barely got that one extra bit of health, so you'll have to Charge Slash and wait for her to come to you. She may not always cooperate, so be prepared to adjust and chase her down. Now in a moment, Enchantress is going to become Shield Knight, so pay attention to what her sprite looks like. You're waiting for Shield Knight to look like this, so make your way over to the left wall. You have control of Shovel Knight. You see how she looks right now, and then as soon as you see her shift her sprite to this one, do a full jump to the right, and at the top of your jump, fire off the coin. Immediately switch over to your knuckles, do a knuckle on the coin, do a short hop to cancel the knuckle, swing, and then jump again to cancel the swing, jump and pogo off the coin, and you'll just barely catch her. Again, from the beginning, you're waiting for her sprite to shift. When you see that happen, jump, coin, knuckle, jump, swing, pogo, and catch. Now, for the first most common way of killing the Enchantress, this is assuming that you're not going to use the coin kill, uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Shield Knight will either jump to the left or right. Where she jumps first indicates where she will remain after she finishes hopping around so that you can try and get up to the Remnant of Fate. 
I know I'm going to be technically wrong, but let's just consider this the boss's left hand starter. Regardless of which hand opens up, you'll be using charge slashes to destroy any of the projectiles that come out of the boss's hand. Just keep in mind that Shield Knight will eventually stop on the right side because in this footage she first jumped to the right side, so this will be her last pass back and forth. Once you've gotten rid of the fireballs, quickly follow her over to the pedestal. Jump, and at the top of your jump, pogo, and then try and start attacking. I missed on the first hit, which is fine. You'll want to get at least five swings, with your sixth hit being a pogo. After a total of three pogos, the remnant will try and move to the side further away from you. So try and bounce off the left side and then move to the right in this case. And then from here to the end, you can finish the remnant off with just knuckles. If you feel like you're falling too low, you can pogo to get back some height, use the dagger to try and get back over to her. Uh, you can also dagger the side of the remnant, uh, but in doing so you won't be close enough to get a pogo off, so make sure that you're either going to kill or you're very close to killing. Alright, so again at full speed, Shield Knight jumped to the right, so that's where she'll eventually end up. Get under the hand, charge slash, use these to cancel out the fireballs. One more pass and Shield Knight will stay on the right side, get in position, pogo. One, two, three, four, five, pogo, pogo, pogo. Knuckle, 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 knuckle. Now for the much harder kill that uses the coin, we're gonna need a lot more setup. Immediately start by launching the gear and jumping on top of it. The moment you land on it, have your coin ready, jump to the left, then turn back to the right, drop your coin. Be careful, your coin can kill the gear, so you really only have one shot at this. You're going to reflect the coin in the air before you land. Use the speed of the gear to kind of catch up to the coin, jump and pogo off the coin, and then switch to your knuckles to start knuckling the remnant of fate. I really can't stress how stupid this beginning is, and this is what took me the majority of my practice. So again, you're throwing the gear, immediately landing on it, and then jumping off of it. At the top of your jump, you're throwing this coin so that you can actually swing at it before you land on the gear. Ride the gear out for just a tiny bit of time, jump, pogo off the coin, and immediately you're trying to move left so that you can actually reach the remnant and start knuckling. Now, similar to the other kill, once you're actually up here, you could do a continuous amount of knuckles and then eventually pogo. However, if you do three knuckles and then wait briefly, you won't actually do your tumble out of what would be the fourth knuckle. So do three knuckles and then pogo, just so you can get yourself back in a position where you're near the top of the remnant's head. The remnant at this point might start to drift to the left, and after doing a set of three, you'll want to do another set of three. Again, you have to be careful, you don't want to lose any height between these, so you need to delay it just enough that you won't get a fourth knuckle, which will cause you to tumble, but you also don't want to lose any height at all if possible. So after doing two sets of three, you do another pogo, and then we'll rinse and repeat one more time. And at this point, the remnant's really going to actually start moving, be a lot further to the left, so make sure that you adjust your knuckles in such a way that you keep up with the remnant. Because of the way we've been staggering our attacks, after the second set of three, pogo into a charge slash for the kill. Between the coin catch on Shield Knight and the coin start of this boss, this is where all of your coin time save is essentially going to be. So gear jump coin, swing pogo, knuckle 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 pogo, knuckle knuckle knuckle, knuckle 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 pogo, knuckle knuckle knuckle, knuckle 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 pogo, charge slash. Now there are some backups and I'm going to be providing those as links as well. And the backups are merely that if you should fail getting up the first time, then you can weave yourself between the fireballs to start the fight off properly anyway. So thank you all for watching. Once again, I am very happy to have uh, finished off this guide series. I really hope that it helps a lot of aspiring Shovel Knight runners. Could not have done this alone, and I would like to drop a lot of special thanks. So big time shout outs to all the people who worked on routing this game. Uh, people like Engage, Applesauce, Smoggy, Munchakoopas, Galooza, Maestro, Diesel, Taiwan Ninja, Explodger Ear, Primorix, Speedfrog, uh, Shoutouts to the old boys like Buster Wolf and Captain Drake. Shoutouts to guys like Hartacha, Magic Madman, and Norcas, who all did great things strat-wise even way after the game was done being routed. Uh, they found lots of little tricks as well. It's always nice to see avid runners popping up. Shoutouts to people like Mr. Gentle, who found many, many different little bugs and tricks and skips, and Clement Gaillet, who worked on the task for Shovel Knight, which is why we actually started doing lots of coin stuff in the first place. 
I'd also like to shout out the people who worked on tools for the game, people like FlatterV and Devil Squirrel. FlatterV who made the S Trainer program, which I highly recommend you download and use if you're a PC runner. It will make your life a lot easier. And Devil Squirrel who made the auto splitter plugin that works with Live Split for Shovel Knight. And shoutouts to all of the Spade Brigade, the Shovel Knight speedrunning Discord. Regardless of which character they run, everyone in there has been like a brother in arms to me. We've all been working, you know, at making this game better. And little known fact, but shoutouts to Tenmachi, who has multiple times ensured the running of Shovel Knight at various marathon events. There's also that Tolu guy, he's pretty cool too. Yo, and uh, shoutouts to Yacht Club Games, the people who made this game. Everyone in there is a super awesome person. Munch is actually getting to work for them right now. Um, so yeah, shoutouts to people like Sean, Shane, Waz, uh, Jocelyn. There's so many people who work at Yacht Club, and they're all really, really cool people. And uh, thank you to anyone who backed this game, who made it possible through funding. So that'll be it for me. I'm going to go ahead and let the credits and staff roll play out. But yeah, hope you're all ready to get digging, and uh, we'll see you maybe submitting times to speedrun.com. Thanks for watching.